All right guys, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to get this Briggs & Stratton engine running. Not sure what's wrong with it, it has no spark, it has compression, it's not seized up, but the gas tank's very filled with varnish, so we're gonna clean all that out, get it to spark, and we're gonna turn it over and see if it fires up, so stay tuned. I'm actually not 100% certain how it's gonna work out with a eight horsepower Briggs & Stratton. The axle is like a four to one ratio, and then on top of that I have gear ratios to worry about so I got the sprocket on the axle and then I got the sprocket on the clutch I mean there's a lot of gear ratios to work with here so I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna do with the gear ratios I chose I mean maybe it'll take off fine with the gear ratios I chose who knows we'll figure it out um, but let's just get it all together right now see if we like it and change stuff as we go so let's just get started on this we're gonna get this Briggs and Stratton fired up today I I'm not too sure what it needs I know it has no spark, so I'm sure it's probably either the points or who knows, maybe everything's all rusted up and needs cleaning, but we'll go through it and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we find. All right, guys, let's get this cover off of here. It's a little long of an extension on it. Whoa. Alright guys, so what I've done was I took all the bolts out that held the front cover on and I just realized I was trying to get it off and it wouldn't come off and I think I figured out why. I never noticed this, but there is a hose clamp. I don't know if you can even see that. There's a hose clamp holding the pull start there, so we gotta get that off and that should allow me to get the front cover off. That's just crazy that that's on there. But I guess it's very appropriate for this. Just loosen up the clamp. So there it goes. Try to still. There she goes. Ooh, rusty. So all the I bet this is the problem right here. The coil just cannot make spark. Oh, it's got a really weird coil on it. This is weird. Well, let's hope it's not the points because this looks like it'd be kind of complicated to take apart. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Take some sandpaper to this, clean it up, and we'll see if we get spark that way. Sand down this flywheel. All right, guys, after a lot of sanding, wow, well, you can just see all the crap building up in the, this is your magnet right here. So this is what, when it goes across the coil, it'll build a spark. So let's, um, let's check if it has spark now. It's, it's actually a really good way to do that. I'm gonna go get some tools. We're gonna, I got a tool to actually check if it has spark. All right, so usually you leave the spark plug in the engine, but I'm gonna take it out so it just makes it easier on my drill to turn it over. And we're gonna use a spark plug tester. Pretty much this will go on the spark plug. This goes on the coil end of the wire. And then we'll see a light in here flash if it has spark. So we're gonna go ahead and get the spark plug out, like I said, to make it easier. And we'll also inspect the spark plug a little bit in the uh, meantime. Might have been burning some oil. It would, nah, she might have been burning oil. Let's clean this up a little bit and then I'll we'll try it all out. I'll be right back. I'm gonna clean this. All done. Good and clean. So instead of risking shocking yourself, you can use this tool. Hook up the spark plug to the tool. Take the light bulb in, hook it up there. And you just set the spark plug down somewhere to ground. There we go. Let's see if we have spark. Nine sixteenths. Which way does that have to turn? This way. Let me bring you in for a close-up. We've got spark. 
All right, guys, here's a closer look. So you'll see the light in there flash when you have spark. Might actually be able to show you the spark looks working. So it has spark now. That's good to know. Let's put the front cover back on and get the wheel system all cleaned up. Back together she goes. my socket. Don't you hate when that happens? I just have it. Oh, is this it? Aha! Onward! You should probably start those all before you start tightening them, but we're gonna just skip that and go right to tightening it. One more bolt. We'll get to this fuel system. Where's the other bolt? There it is. So as you guys can see, it's real easy to figure out these older engines. It wasn't very complicated at all. The flywheel had a little bit of a rust and corrosion on it. Sand that off, and now it has spark. It did not have spark before. I'm super glad it did. So let's get the gas tank. Let's get the gas tank taken off. All right, so I already got the two bolts out on the bottom of the tank and the fuel line removed, which also was a nightmare. Turns out the fuel line is... I'm glad I didn't put gas in it and just try to start it. It's all broken and it's shot. The clamps are no good. The two bolts are out. Um, also, I took the fuel filter apart and you can see in there, it's all varnishy. I've been kind of scraping it out. I put fresh gas in the tank a while ago, but that's all varnish in there. So I'm going to put some fresh gas in that. So hopefully it'll clean it out and everything. We're going to scrub out that varnish, but it's all, it's all brown. That's just me sticking my finger in cleaning that out so we're gonna get these two bolts out these are also to the head so we're gonna get these two bolts out and then we will um, get the tank out and I got a trick to clean the tank out really well it's a nice little easy trick and you guys can see how I do that also you don't want to do that to your your head bolts if you actually are in a position of caring about the Oh, there's my new fuel line, by the way. Yeah, the fuel line's a little bit smaller than the other one, but I think it'll do. So, this has some gas in it right now. We're going to put some bolts in here and shake it up and get all the crap out of it and see what comes out. So, it shouldn't be too bad because I've cleaned it a few times already. But we're going to throw some bolts in here, shake it, get all the gunk out, and then we will uh, we'll see what comes out. Maybe it'll be all clean by now. Let's we'll find out. All right, what you're going to want to do is take these bolts like this. I already got a few in there, and drop them in your tank. Put some gas in here, shake this all up, or you can actually use a cleaner if you really want to. And um, put the lid on it, shake it really vigorously and rapid, and everything you gotta do to get all the crap. And the trick is those are gonna go around and kinda clean it and scrape and get all the corrosion off. And then we're gonna dump it out and see what comes out. So let's get this all shaken up. Yeah. So I already shook it a bunch, I didn't wanna it was kind of hard to do that with the camera, so I'll go dump this out and show you what comes out. This is what came out. Look at this. It's actually, uh, it was pretty bad. That was all in the tank. And that's after me cleaning it three times of not really using... Man, that is insane. It's three times of cleaning it and flushing it, but that's not three times of, you know, doing the shake technique. But the shake technique got out all the the stuff I believe it'll be good enough to run now and I can actually see in there it's not all that bad anymore just look at that nastiness I think it's good enough actually to get it running. I think it's, this will filter through anyway, so it'll clean up even more as it goes. So this will be fine just to get it running. We'll see how good it runs, if we have any weird noises or anything. And if we don't, we'll, we'll clean it out more. Oh, this is glass, by the way. Pretty nice. Back on the engine. Let's see, set this here. Guess that's in all the way. Oh, no, there it is. 
And then we got a little clamp system here. It looks like it goes on about like that. And we're gonna tighten this up right here to hold it all nice and snug. I guess you don't wanna to go too tight. That would be pretty bad, I imagine. Like that. So let's put some fresh gas in this tank and uh, open up the fuel valve, which is right here. Oh, that's not stuck anymore. That was stuck. Cleaning helps. Oh, yeah. I think it's leaking. I don't see any leaks. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's give it a few pulls and see what happens. That's a little concerning. Can we, like, do something about it? All right, let's see if this thing will fire up. All right, even though we have spark, we've been trying to get this thing to start and it hasn't started, so I've been taking the carburetor apart. Um, and I've noticed a few, I've already kind of put it back together. I've found a few ugh, broken pieces, actually. So let me actually take this apart again. I found a few broken pieces. It turns out the jet, because when I went to start it, it would pump gas from the in inner carburetor bowl. It pumped gas from the inside of the carburetor bowl down into the intake system, like that, and it started peeing out right here on the ground. I thought, that's weird. So I look at it, and it turns out the jet, this is supposed to go up into the engine, and that's how it draws its gas in from there. Well, this is broke off, so that was kind of just sitting there. And then I was wondering, well, that's weird. I wonder why it's doing that. As I take out the... Uh, I guess this is a adjuster. You can see it's all bent and it was broken. So that's broken. That's broken. So it needs a jet and a, I think that's an idle mixture screw. I believe that's what that is. So yeah, I can't believe that. But you know, it's very interesting the way the carburetor system works on this old Briggs. But at least we figured it out. This is broken. That's probably what the main issue was. Now we know we need a few things to get this thing actually up and running, which I will order right now, but don't worry, I won't make this one video. When I get the parts, then I'll upload the video. We'll get it all set up in one video for you guys so you could hear this thing run. All right guys, new carburetor just came in the mail, $16. It was shipped right to my door. It took about a week to get here. Hopefully it's the right carburetor. I'm gonna open it up and let you guys see what we have got in the mail. Hopefully it's gonna work. Um, just for a reference, this is the old carburetor, and there's the intake manifold. The old carburetor actually, it had some broken parts to it. So what we've ended up doing was, I was just going to get a rebuild kit for it, but if you can just order a brand new uh, carburetor for the same price as a rebuild kit, you can end up with this whole contraption right here. But if you don't know, the jet is right here. This is what allows the gas to go through it, which looks clogged actually. Hmm. So this is the jet. This tube hooks to the jet and they call this a updraft carburetor. So this kind of sucks the gas from right here in the carburetor bowl and it goes up into, well you can't really see in there. It goes up into the throat of the carburetor and that's what gets its gas and this is where the air comes from through here. So that was broke off, and then the screw that actually adjusted how much gas goes through the jet was broke. So this carburetor, that was probably why it wasn't running. Um, it had no spark, which I also, after editing a little bit, I realized I didn't explain that too well. So I really didn't explain what I was doing when I was sanding down the flywheel with some sandpaper. What I was actually trying to do was get the rust off the flywheel where the coil met the magnet. Once I got it all cleared off, I had to take a screwdriver and clear out where the magnet met the, the flywheel so that way it would be just a separate magnet around the aluminum. So now when it goes around, it got spark. Before it was so caked on with corrosion and rust that they were connected together so the whole flywheel, it never had a break in the magnets to create spark in the coil. There is a few different changes I've done to the engine since it was last on camera. Number one, I went ahead and bolted it down to a piece of wood and then strapped the engine to that piece of wood which is actually mounted on the uh, go-kart itself so that way it won't like roll all over the place and we could tune the carburetor and everything pretty much that's what i've done 
it's all bolted down right there. It's got a strap around it. We got tools ready to go. We're gonna try to bolt the new uh, intake. We're actually, it didn't come with an intake, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna bolt the old intake, bolt the new carburetor. Mm, we're probably not gonna hook up the governor. We're just gonna have it idle and get it all tuned up that way. And then we'll get started. All right, opening this up with one hand can, oh, there we go. All right, one hand is gonna make it a little bit of a challenge. So, oh, hold on, it's taped. Hang on, let me get some, and look at that, a brand new carburetor, and it's, it's practically exactly the same. There's just minor little differences that really don't make a big difference to me. Um, this has actually got a way bigger spring. Actually, all of them have a nice longer uh, adjustment compared to that one, and the idle mixture screw, this looks like it's gonna be a little bit better. Now is the throat, yeah, it's still tiny. This is also a little bit of an issue. This little heat shield right here is all that's gonna keep the carburetor from getting, or the intake manifold from getting super hot. So we're gonna wrap that up with some, some kind of like thermal sleeving so that way it doesn't get it too hot and then hopefully that'll help dissipate heat with our intake manifold. All right, guys, take a look at that. So my thermo sleeving I had was definitely not big enough to go around the whole thing, but I figured I only really need to cool half of it. So this is gonna definitely help a lot. And I just have it held on with some wire and it's nice and thermo sleeved. So, well, I can't really say it's thermo sleeved. It's only half sleeved, but now it should dissipate heat a lot better and I won't wanna heat my intake manifold up. So now let's go ahead and bolt the carburetor on. All right, new carburetor. Let's hook up our governor. Don't want to over rev it. And let's take our screws. Hmm, that's not right. Hold on. Well, that is not the right thread anymore. So the this is not a direct bolt-on carburetor, now that I know that. You won't be able to use the stock screws that went with the manifold. I'm gonna have to try to find some that I have lying around. I mean, hopefully I do. Well, I found one screw, and I know for a fact it's gonna be way too big. Um, so for the second screw, I'm just gonna actually nut and bolt it. That's wrong and weird, but what else are you gonna do? You gotta come up with something. Just take this. Hmm, this doesn't look like it's gonna work, so I should have. Well, I mean, I guess it'll work. Let's try it. No, I can't fit my hand in there. Hmm. Hold on. Where's some pliers of some kind? I might. Ah, uh, did I? Fuel line is definitely leaking. I had it hooked up to the old carburetor. good that loose this is gonna be the tricky one to tighten up hmm I don't want it to try to rev and hmm maybe we can yeah I'm gonna put some wire on this just to hold it at idle I'm gonna hook that fuel line up as it leaks everywhere there all right so we got everything adjusted the way we want it we got it where it's wired to where it'll only idle this is out probably too far. This is out a turn and a half. We'll, we'll be tuning it as it's running. Uh, we got this out about a turn and a half. We shouldn't have to worry about that. That's for like wide open throttle. This is the crankcase vent, so that's not hooked up, but we shouldn't have to worry about that. We haven't started it yet. Um, you can see the exhaust is still ice cold. I can put my hand on it, it hasn't ran. We have a wire here, but I, I'll probably just use a screwdriver just to pop it off, because we don't have a kill switch yet. Oh, you know what? We gotta turn the fuel on. That would have been a mistake. So the fuel is actually really cool. You just twist this little knob a few times. She should have gas in her. All right, so, you know, I'll actually try to hold the camera and start it. So let's see, let's try to get the choke just cracked open. Now I'm actually gonna pull it, not fully, I'm just gonna get enough to prime some gas into it. All right, first pull, ready? 
One. Alright guys, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. The thing runs great. It can do, I can use a little bit more tweaking as far as getting the carburetor adjusted, but it runs actually really well. So we're just going to throw the whole in filter system back on it once we get it all tuned, but that'll be for a later video. So right now we just need to mount the engine, put the clutch on it, hook up the steering, make the brakes work, and we could ride this thing actually. So stay tuned for that. That should be in the next video. It's so exciting to get it all put back together and know that it's actually running properly. Um, the only thing I really can't wait to do is ride it now. I, we got to get a few things still figured out. We got to mount the engine, put a clutch on it, chain it up, um, hook up the steering system and the brake system, and then pretty much we're ready to go. I mean, as it is, we got a uh, throttle system already down here. So stay tuned for all of the upcoming projects that are still in the works. We're still working on the rack cart. We're going to get a camper show going. We're still working on a Baja rack for the truck. So stay tuned for all that. Oh, also we have an 03 Expedition that we're going to lift, put big tires on it. You know, all the fun stuff that comes with the four-wheel drive. So stay tuned for all the videos. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.